Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining on time. It's now 10 sharp Central Europe summer time, and we are starting our meeting. I would like to welcome you all to this UNIC UNDP joint workshop. It's a pleasure to see you all at least virtually. My name is Inga Poderogin, and I'm specialist for the environment, climate, and energy program within UNDP Moldova. And together with Oleg Zubinsky, regional advisor in the sustainable energy division of UNIC, uh, will be moderating this workshop. Uh, a few technical uh, details before we start the workshop. Uh, a Russian English translation is ensured. Um, so I, I would like, um, just a second. Um, to uh, ask uh, colleagues to project the, um, the presentation. So um, before, uh, before the, the presentation is being projected, um, uh, so I continue with this uh, technical details. A Russian English uh, translation is ensured uh, throughout the whole event. Um, uh, the event will last 90 minutes. Uh, it will consist of opening speech from senior uh, level representatives and two sessions with presentations divided by a short break. Uh, the event uh, will be uh, ruled by certain rules. Uh, first of all, uh, we would like to respect to these rules. Um, we would like to you to mute your microphones if you are not speaking as well as switching off your camera uh, uh, if you are not speaking. Um, please note that we'll be taking questions in the Zoom chat uh, while the presentations are delivered by the uh, participants. Uh, so please point the questions that you want to ask in the chat. And um, if you want to intervene, uh, we have the options of raise the hands uh, so that you can request the floor. Um, the objective of today's meeting uh, is to present the results of the national studies in Armenia, Kyrgyzstan and Moldova on where the country stands with energy efficiency standards in buildings and what are the suggestions to improve the situation in this area so that the countries are compliant with the framework guideline for energy efficiency in buildings, which is developed by UNIC. Uh, and approved uh, by, by this um, organization. Uh, additionally, we will dive deeper into Moldova's context and you can uh, learn better on uh, ongoing UNDP initiatives to support energy efficiency in the buildings. With saying that, let us wish us an interesting, interacting and insightful event. And now I have the floor, I have the honor to invite uh, senior representatives uh, for delivering the welcoming remarks. Uh, and we will start from Mr. Scott Foster, Director of the Sustainable Energy Division uh, within the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. So please, Mr. Foster, you have the floor. Good morning. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and welcome to this workshop on energy efficiency standards in buildings and their implementation. Um, that has been actually well explained already. Um, I'd like to give a little bit of background, if I may. Um, several years back, we um, had endorsement of framework guidelines for energy efficiency standards in buildings. And they were a set of principles uh, that should be applied uh, to the development of buildings. Within the guidelines, uh, there was a call for deployment and dissemination, and that's to happen globally. Uh, in all honesty, nobody's doing very well in the area of buildings. 40% uh, of carbon dioxide emissions uh, come from the services, the energy services that buildings require. And we actually have the chance today to pretty much eliminate uh, those CO2 emissions, um, as well as at the same time delivering high uh, quality of life. And it's on that basis that we've launched our um, high performance buildings initiative, as we call it. I'd like to tell a very brief story. Uh, we were in Ireland um, a few years back uh, and we visited um, a set of buildings, uh, residential buildings uh, that had been developed according to these guidelines. 
and uh, it was social housing, so it was low income housing. And we talked to all of the occupants uh, and they were just delighted. Uh, their energy bills had gone down. The comfort levels in their homes had improved enormously. Uh, the quality of the air with particulates was resolved. Uh, there was no mildew, uh, no um, um, problems for health. Um, so their children who had previously been missing school was no longer an issue. And there was comfort throughout the home. And the important story in that whole anecdote is that there's word of mouth. People talk to each other. And all of the people who were on the waiting list for social housing would call the authorities and say, we don't want one of the traditional uh, homes. We want one of these cool homes because that's uh, the way to go. So there's clearly a demand and a need for this, not just because it's energy efficiency, which doesn't speak to a lot of people, but because it delivers the quality of life that people are demanding. So if I can kind of expand that to more UN speak, uh, the ultimate objective of our initiative is to improve the overall health and quality of life within the built environment, within the home, but also uh, the surroundings, while simultaneously decarbonizing the energy requirements of buildings. So buildings are key to achieving the 2030 agenda. Uh, as I've mentioned, they've done uh, deliver on a lot of the goals. Uh, they promote sustainable urban development. Uh, they recognize buildings as complex systems. They tackle poverty because they're helping reduce the energy bills. Uh, they accelerate the efficiency with which buildings, uh, energy services are provided uh, and the whole climate angle. So all of the building uh, solutions, if you will, are, are on display in this, in this initiative. So what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to deploy the UNECE framework guidelines for energy efficiency standards in buildings, as well as the Geneva UN Charter on sustainable housing. And the idea is to accelerate the transformation of the building stock. Now, if you can bear with me just one second, I will try to share my uh, a brief presentation here. Uh, and you can see uh, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, what we have is um, uh, improving on energy and climate action, improving on health, uh, resilience, how you can deal with both affordability. Look at what happened in Texas a while back with uh, dealing with the cold winter weather, but it also helps address water, uh, sanitation, deluge, drought, uh, resources, mobility. There's a wide range. When you look at all of the aspects of high performance buildings, people tend to think about the envelope, which is what are the materials being used in the building? How do you design the building? How do you construct the building? And that's what we call the envelope. But if you expand the vision to include all of the systems, the heating and the ventilating, the air conditioning, the energy sources, the information and communications technology, you're actually able to get outcomes that are um, way beyond simply the energy efficiency angle. And we consider that to be uh, extremely important. So what we're doing now is we're implementing this project, enhancing national capacities to develop and implement energy efficiency standards for buildings in the ECE region. And the important goal of the project is to improve the overall performance of buildings. The project promotes implementation of those guidelines. They can be referred to as, as the reference points. How do you assess the situation on existing standards and how are they being implemented? So one of the activities has been to conduct a gap analysis. Where are we today in terms of the performance uh, objectives that they set and how are they being implemented currently uh, in the country? So this project is looking at Southeastern and Eastern Europe, the Caucasus, Central Asia and the Russian Federation. Today's workshop is gonna review the findings of a draft gap analysis and try to validate its uh, recommendations. So we'll talk through the status of development implementation of energy efficiency standards in buildings and identify existing initiatives that would help uh, develop energy efficient housing stock. To my view, the first step, we've set that long target. We're understanding what the gap is and we want to find out what's the best approach we should take to fill it in. And this is a very important meeting. I'm looking forward to the results. Um, I'll stop there and, and then hand it back to you. Thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you, Mr. Foster, for this important message and uh, providing us some insights of the project that is being implemented by UNIC. Um, and now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Vahram Jalalian, who is co-chairing the UNIC Joint Task Force on Energy Efficiency Standards and Buildings. Please, Mr. Jalalian, you have the floor. Uh, dear colleagues, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. And welcome to the joint UNDP UNEC online workshop on energy efficiency standards in buildings and their implementation in the UNC region. Uh, more, much was already told about the uh, framework guidelines and the prehistory of this. I just would like to uh, add on top of that that last year the framework guidelines were reviewed, uh, updated, and the updated version was adopted. So currently, with support of the Joint Task Force on Energy Efficiency in Standards and Buildings, uh, UNEC is implementing that project, which, as was already mentioned, uh, aims to enhance the capacity of the UNEC member states to develop or implement energy efficiency in buildings. And the special focus is on, on residential buildings there. Uh, the project is named Enhancing National Capacities to Develop and Implement Energy Efficiency Standards for buildings in UNEC region and is covering 17 countries. Uh, to do so, to uh, do so, the existing energy efficiency standards and their implementation is being uh, studied and analyzed in all 17 countries and will be verified and compared if the actual situation is in line with the objectives of the framework guidelines set forth. Uh, to keep it short, uh, today during this workshop, the findings will be uh, presented and uh, I encourage you to take uh, part in the discussion of these findings and recommendations as well. Uh, can I add on that small story with the background of this video, which you can see this red and white building. This is the building in, in Armenia, which was retrofit last year uh, based on new energy efficiency standards together with the uh, UNDP and government co-financing. This is among one of the first buildings and so far we have 32 buildings which are under construction and another 78 are in the pipeline. But that's, that's a different long story. So wishing you a fruitful workshop and we'll stop here. Thank you, Mr. Zalalian. Today's event is an opportunity for Moldova to inform on developments with green building certification systems and behavioral experimentation on electricity use in the residential sector. Both activities are implemented with the support of UNDP. So I would like to invite our next speaker, Ms. Andrea Chuzova, Deputy Resident Representative of UNDP in Moldova with opening remarks. Thank you very much, Inga. Thank you very much, colleagues uh, from UNECE and uh, dear government representatives, dear participants and ladies and gentlemen, good morning or afternoons or evenings wherever you are joining us from. I am also very pleased to be joining this important event and to celebrate the power of partnership for sustainable development and implementation of the SDGs and the 2030 Agenda. Uh, this online workshop is a strategically important milestone on the journey to affordable and clean energy, the SDG 7, and as a result to a, towards a more efficient, greener and healthier, as we heard, future for all. Today's discussion will be shaped around the topic of energy efficiency, standards and building, which play an important role in reducing countries' dependency on fossil fuel imports and improved living and working conditions. There is a clear understanding that energy efficient buildings are an important tool for climate mitigation. The potential for this area in the countries from the region is indeed very high. And we are looking forward to hearing the findings and recommendations of national studies on how to lay the solid foundation to bring the change nationwide for building, buildings compliant with energy efficient standards. In Moldova, the building sector is responsible for almost 4% of all greenhouse gas emissions. In the updated national determined contribution of 2020, building sector is seen as having a high potential for GHG emission reduction target 
four percent by 2030. That is why energy efficiency in building sector is an important mitigation target that is pursued by national authorities and where UNDP Moldova has been very active in testing innovative solutions to improve energy efficiency in the residential sector. A large behavioral experiment conducted by UNDP Moldova in close cooperation with the largest energy, energy service provider, Premier Energy, proved that social norms and behavioral nudging could improve electricity use at the level of households. Similarly, UNDP Moldova holds the results of testing of some innovative mechanisms when it comes to energy efficiency in buildings such as ESCOs and energy performance contracts, and has published the critical factors uh, that need to be addressed for the viability of these mechanisms. And lastly, UNDP Moldova has been instrumental recently in establishing the Green City Lab as the catalyst for the innovations and experimentation on low carbon ur urban development. It has, the Green City Lab has an ambition to become the leading knowledge management platform on several fronts, including energy efficiency and renewable uh, energy in the residential sectors of the capital city of Kishinev. Uh, one of the, just to illustrate, one of the most recent results of the Green City Lab was development of a green building design code that is a tool to encourage local authorities and business in transitioning to a new type of buildings designed to consider the energy efficiency factors to undertake efficiency, efficient measures for retrofitting the existing building stock, to introduce the building's green certification, as well as use of green building materials. And more details on this work will be presented by our colleagues in the second part of the, of the event. In the closure, I would like to highlight that delivering the affordable and clean energy, the SDG 7, is an ambitious endeavor for every country. And I wish to take this opportunity to extend our deep appreciation and sincere thanks to UNEC colleagues and government partners for joining forces and resources with UNDP Moldova to advance these endeavors at the national level. Thank you very much. And I'm wishing. Um, everyone a really fruitful, constructive, and good discussions at this e-workshop. Thank you. Over to you, Inka. Thank you, Andrea, <clears throat> for uh, giving some heads up of UNDP work in, in Moldova. Uh, with this, I would like to close the opening session and uh, to extend the regrets of Moldova officials of not being able to join today's event. However, I see that we have uh, a quite a number of participants from Moldova, so uh, that's, that's very good. Uh, and uh, yes, Oleg, you have the floor for moderating the first session. Thank you. Thank you, Inga. And I would like to uh, express my gratitude to the uh, colleagues uh, who just spoke at the opening session for the welcoming remarks to Scott Foster, uh, Director of the Sustainable Energy Division at UNEC, to Vahram Jalalan, co-chair of the Joint Task Force on Energy Efficiency Standards in Buildings under the UNEC Group of Experts on Energy Efficiency and the Committee on Urban Development, Housing and Land Management, and to Andrea Chuzova, um, the deputy, rep re sorry, deputy resident representative of UNDP in Moldova. Uh, thank you all. That was a very good setting the stage for this workshop. Uh, and uh, we are right on time. We're starting the first session of this workshop. Uh, and without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Nadezhda Hamrakulova, who works me, with me on the project. And uh, she will give you the full title of the project and what exactly is being done in it. And uh, the main uh, part of it is presenting to you um, uh, to all the participants, the uh, preliminary results, the uh, draft uh, gap analysis of the energy efficiency standards, or to be more exact, uh, gap analysis of what exists now and what are the goals set uh, in the framework guidelines for energy efficiency standards in buildings. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, the floor uh, will be with Nadezhda. Let me just share the screen 
for a moment. So you will, uh, no, that's the wrong way to share the screen. Uh, yeah, this is, I think this is the one, share. Let me see if that works. I think it does. Uh, so we will have presentations from Nadezhda Hamrakulova, who, who is the project officer for this project at the UNEC. Uh, uh, Mr. Sergio Robu, uh, a UNEC consultant, uh, is working on an in-depth study for Moldova. Uh, Mr. Andrea Ohanian will speak on behalf of uh, UNEC consultant uh, Ani Rafian. Unfortunately, she is sick and we wish her speedy recovery. Uh, that will be a presentation for Armenia. And then Mikhail Toropov will make a presentation for Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Thank you all. Thank you for coming to this workshop. And Nadezhda, the floor is yours. And let me stop sharing the screen somehow. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, thank you, Oleg, for giving me the floor. Let me start sharing the screen and sharing my presentation. Uh, I will put it on full mode. Yes. Um, so I would like to, uh, as Oleg mentioned, I would like to make a presentation on the preliminary findings of the gap analysis between the performance objective set forth in the framework guidelines for energy efficiency standards in buildings and uh, the actual existing energy efficiency standards in countries and also their uh, implementation, the level of their uh, status of their implementation in the countries. Um, this is uh, one of the activities of the project in enhancing national capacities to develop and implement energy efficiency standards for buildings in the UNEC region. Uh, this is now a second phase of this project and the first phase of project was implemented earlier in, in 2017 and 18. The current study is building on the outcomes of the previous studies and were taken uh, on, in, during the phase one. And this current study is addressing the situation in 17 countries of Southeastern Europe, Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, and the Russian Federation. Um, in particular, this study is, is, will look, is, look, is looking into implementation of energy efficiency standards in those countries. Um, it shows how the situation corresponds to the objectives of the framework guidelines and what are the gaps between the principles and objectives of the framework guidelines and this actual situation. Um, the findings, uh, I will present in more details those findings, as well as indicate what other barriers uh, were identified to adopt and implement um, the high performance standards in buildings in those countries, and as well as the draft recommendations as opportunities to bridge the, the gap. Um, the, me the methodology that was used for this uh, study includes um, a different type of information collected from the desktop research. Um, in fact, it included various sources that are indicated here on the slide. Um, that is also included uh, the very big part of uh, the preparation for this research included the uh, preparation of con draft country profiles for each of the 17 countries. And these draft country profiles had three major parts. The first part addressed um, the policies uh, that are existing and the policies for each country were reviewed, the framework legislation, the building energy codes, the compliance mechanisms, the energy performance certification, energy pricing measures, financial incentives, promotion, uh, promotion of ESCO and awareness programs, as well as the institutional capacity. Um, the second and third part were devoted to the uh, requirements for energy uh, performance in new constructions and as well as in existing buildings, both residential and non-residential. These parts also looked both um, at the uh, building envelopes, at the heating and ventilation, a cooling at water heating appliance equipment and the light lightning. These uh, draft country profiles were prepared and sent in December um, to experts and governmental representatives for review 
for validating the information that we um, identified, that we found. And based on the, already the result of uh, this exercise, this activity, the information was analyzed in the main part of the research, in the main part of report. Uh, so coming to the findings, um, I would like to start from um, the framework legislation and policy documents that were reviewed in this study. This overall, uh, the framework legislation is quite developed in countries. The situation um, slightly changes from country to country, from sub-region to sub-region. Um, in some countries, um, the national energy efficiency action plans are adopted and implemented. In the other countries, they are not. For example, in Central Asian region, the, the, these NEOPs are not um, adopted and implemented. In some countries, the energy development strategies are particularly presented and being implemented. Um, and as well as the other specific governmental programs that exist. Um, unfortunately, here during the presentation, I won't be able to stop on every single of, uh, country of, of this, um, uh, of this uh, draft study. However, I would like to invite you to, um, to have a look, to, to review this draft document. It's available on, on the ECE website. It's still a draft version. And uh, all the information and all details regarding this uh, review of the policy part um, is presented there in chapter one. Um, coming back again to the findings, um, I would like to say that overall, the um, framework legislation is well developed. However, um, uh, in some countries, the updates and amendments are introduced more. In the other countries, they are uh, present less. Um, I would say that this draft review revealed that the less development are done, for example, in Tajikistan and Azerbaijan in the recent times. Um, we particularly looked at the building energy codes in the first part of, the, of this study um, and identified that all countries have adopted uh, the building energy codes. However, um, the situation differs with regards to with regards to um, uh, the updates of these energy codes, with regards to their recent developments that would be intro uh, introduced and incorporated in those energy uh, uh, building energy codes. In, uh, in different subregions, the situation again differs. Um, in, uh, in, some, in some countries, there are some very recent developments. Uh, however, again, I would like to invite you to check more detailed information on the overview of specifically of building energy codes that presented in the draft study. And this overview um, includes information on each country and it indicates which coverage are, uh, uh, which, what is the coverage of this uh, building codes, whether they're mandatory or voluntary in each country, or what are the requirements being the performance-based requirements and prescriptive requirements of those codes. Um, based on this detailed assessment or detailed in, uh, information, we further on um, uh, assessed information. Uh, we further on assessed information and uh, the situation in each subregion. Uh, and <clears throat> overall, the progress in energy efficiency in the countries over the last ten years have uh, been significant. The countries made a lot of progress, as I mentioned already, on building energy codes, on uh, developing the frame and updating the framework legislation, on particular indication, indicating the compliance system, and as well as on, um, on the incentives and mechanisms and also enforcement mechanisms. Here um, on this slide, I indicate the information also from the World Bank. Uh, from their regular, regulatory indicators for sustainable energy report, uh, which also proves uh, and uh, uh, but, um, proves the same findings that our draft study had that the progress in countries was uh, indeed very significant over the last ten years. Uh, according to World Bank, here the, infer the less progress have been done in Azerbaijan, in Kyrgyz Republic, and in Turkmenistan out of the project countries. Um, however, during the, uh, the, the assessment that we undertook, 
uh, we found out that the, the recent developments and some amendments and the developments in Kyrgyz Republic uh, make it um, make it more, um, let's say, um, on a higher level than it would be indicated here in the World Bank um, assessment. I I believe that we will have a presentation soon from our colleague and uh, consultant on. Of, on the particular in situation in Kyrgyzstan, and we will see uh, uh, what are the developments and whether these which assessment um, is more accurate or more actual in terms of uh, where the country is standing in, uh, with progress. Um, the the um, this um, draft study also used the, the method of SWOT analysis. It presented information an assessment from both chapters of um, the report on existing policies and also on energy performance um, of buildings, compliance mechanism, enforcement mechanism, existing of incentives, institutional capacities. Based on all this information, um, the uh, SWOT analysis was prepared for each subregion. Um, and for example, for the Southeastern Europe, so, um, it has some particularities. Here, I wouldn't, I would not indicate um, everything what is on slide. I just would like to mention that the framework legislation is backed up in this subregion by uh, implementation of national energy efficiency action plans. That the building codes are mandatory uh, for both new and existing uh, buildings, which is not always the case in other their subregions, that the ASCO legislation is existing. However, the actual activities on ASCOs are still um, in lack. And um, you can see also that there is an absence of mandatory energy performance monitoring requirement, lack of some specific uh, incentives for the building codes enforcement in that subregion. Moving to the another subregion which covers Eastern Europe and the Russian Federation. The Russian Federation was included in Eastern Europe for, for the purposes of comparative analysis. So here it would cover um, Moldova, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russian Federation. Um, again, this what analysis also indicated that uh, the framework legislation is developed. Uh, however, the national action plans are implement are being adopted and implemented um, only in Moldova and Ukraine. There are specific incentives and specific programs that are existing in this subregion, um, as well as the adopted standards and labels for appliance. However, at the same time, there are also some weaknesses. For example, the ESCOs are not operating in all countries. Um, the ESCO legislation is also is less developed. Um, there is an absence of mandatory performance monitoring requirements, as well as the penalties for non-compliance with building um, energy codes. Again, this is just a listing. Uh, the more information is available in the draft study itself. Moving to the Caucasus uh, countries, here the situation differs from country to country. In Armenia and in Georgia, the um, energy efficiency standards were transposed in accordance with the EU requirements. There are some recent developments in, in adoption of energy efficiency laws, national action plans, specific policies also in Armenia and Georgia. There are less development in uh, the, with regards to energy efficiency legislation in Azerbaijan. Um, again, the building codes um, are different. In, in Armenia, for example, they're mandatory, but they're not mandatory in Georgia. Um, the situation with Azerbaijan, I would say, is a bit unclear with regards to the recent development on, in this area. There is an absence of functional ESCO market in this subregion. Um, and this, in subregion, uh, out of three countries, there are no um, energy efficiency agency present. They analyze the same SWOT analysis for the Central Asian countries. Uh, showed that, again, the framework legislation is existing. However, for example, there is no energy efficiency law in Turkmenistan. The building codes also adopted. However, not all of them were recently updated. Um, the financial incentives for improvements in uh, energy efficiency improvements in buildings are present. 
and in um, different countries of the subregion. However, we also see the absence of incentives for improving uh, compliance with building energy codes in some countries, as well as the absence of penalties for compliance, for non-compliance, sorry, uh, with um, energy efficiency standards in buildings. And for example, the, the, the threat or the risk um, also uh, 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 that could lead for the problematic was also the absence of data and information for Tajikistan and Turkmenistan, or let's say a very um, scarce information for this, from this country on the recent development in uh, energy efficiency um, areas. So based on the each sub-regional um, SWOT analysis, here is the, the common elements and the common strengths and weaknesses and also opportunities for developing and implementing energy efficiency standards, as well as potential threats and risks. Um, again, I wouldn't, I would not read all, all of these here. It's just um, the um, the general information presenting that saying and indicating that building energy codes again were adopted in many countries, the framework legislation is quite strongly present. Um, the good points is there are also energy labeling requirements presented in most of the countries, the financial incentives in one way or another present in many countries. However, the major weakness is that uh, the residential sector is a very high consumer of energy um, in, in, in all countries, basically. In some countries, it's the largest. In some countries, it's the second lar largest sector. And um, the existing buildings, the buildings were constructed not recently. They are the, uh, the, the, those who are consuming most. Again, this is not new. However, the, the existing building stocks in, in uh, uh, all the project countries um, is significantly bigger and it needs uh, also consideration on this. There are lack of activities of ESCO, as I mentioned before. Um, the, common, the common opportunities it, it includes the presence of um, the energy efficiency agencies in some countries from one side. However, it presents a threat or a risk of um, less implementation of energy efficiency standards because it, such agencies are not present in the other countries. So it can be also something that the, the presence of the, the dedicated agency which can in, monitor and implement energy efficiency measures. However, in many countries, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and, Azerbaijan, and Uzbekistan, um, these agencies were not established by, by today. Um, they gained the energy tariffs uh, were increased in some countries. However, the general situation indicates that there are low energy prices, which in many cases leading to the absence of uh, driving force towards energy efficiency improvements in existing buildings and as well as in um, the buildings to be constructed also. Um, there are also, pro um, in terms of threats, there are also mandatory absence of mandatory energy performance monitoring requirements in majority of countries and the same uh, uh, repeating that there are no, no or the lack of penalties um, or not prescribed penalties for non-compliance with building energy codes, again, in majority of countries. Um, the objective of the study was to verify whether this, this situation and the findings that this um, study had identified are in conformity uh, with the objectives of the framework guidelines. Um, so in terms of the strategic guidance or overall, um, the, this draft study revealed that legislation is updated and existing in countries, that some countries have developed uh, their regulatory documents um, recently. However, the other countries still need to do this to ensure um, uh, the shift to higher performance standards, both in new and existing buildings. Um, and uh, um, the existing uh, build, for example, uh, provisions and norms um, are not uh, corresponding sometimes to the requirements of the framework guidelines, which are uh, 
um, indicating that the um, that those requirements should be in line with technological advances. Um, in terms of the performance-based requirements, again, the study looked how the implementation of the energy um, efficiency standards in buildings correspond to um, the principles and objectives of the framework guidelines. It indicated um, that most technical requirements are observed in countries um, and in the subregions, except for the Central Asian countries, here it's less, and this uh, overall uh, overview table um, is showing with which are requirements uh, present and in, um, in the countries and uh, which requirements are present less. Um, the overview of requirements to identify energy performance gap was also um, a part of um, this uh, exercise, um, if I may call it. Um, of this assessment. Uh, the requirements for um, post-construction uh, of, of the thermal bridge and air tightness testing, they are mostly present. However, when this table clearly indicates that the other requirements are all, almost not present in countries. For example, the um, use of IPMVP, International Performance Measurement Verification Protocol is almost, uh, not is not used in, in almost in all countries. Uh, the EPB standards are also used in a few countries out of uh, of uh, these uh, uh, 17 project countries. The software, specific software for compliance verification is also used only in a few. So again, here that showed that the situation is quite not in conformity with the framework guidelines, which would require um, to identify the energy performance gap um, also in, in, and uh, monitor in situation in the buildings. Um, further on to the conformity of um, the, the, the implementation of energy efficiency standards and uh, this can, with the framework guidelines, um, the framework guidelines indicating that the specific requirements for the new building constructions and uh, the specific requirements for energy use uh, in, the in, in the buildings. Uh, here you can see that, for example, the total primary energy use um, can be limited uh, to 45 kilowatt hour per square meter annually and it can be doubled while using different appliances. This table, um, is just an overview of situation and information that we found out with regards to the requirements uh, present in the uh, building energy codes in countries. In many countries, um, these requirements are not indicated in as a performance-based requirements. In many countries, um, we don't have data on, in some countries, sorry, we don't have data about this information, but in other countries, the performance-based requirements do not exist. It again, one more time showing that the um, situation is not in the conformity with the framework guidelines uh, currently. Um, again, the framework guidelines um, were also um, here we, we looked also at how is not only the requirements, but what is the actual situation? Is that further in conformity with framework guidelines, principles or not? And the situation with the new buildings is um, I would say a bit more positive because the construction of new buildings um, has some requirements to observe the performance based requirements and ensuring compliance with the building energy code. And therefore we, uh, we, we illustrate some examples where in countries, these can be in compliance, in, in, um, uh, in conformity with the framework guidelines or very close to it. However, the situation um, radically changing uh, when we are looking into the existing buildings because the existing buildings consume a very high um, amount of energy and the consumption and the, uh, that um, we, we identified and here I have also illustrated some examples from countries 
indicate that the, the, uh, the actual consumption is significantly higher than those which are presented as the, the guiding principles or guiding um, guidelines uh, in, in, in the framework guidelines. So here, um, the situation again drastically changes between the, the new buildings and the existing building stock. Um, the, the draft study identified the existing barriers, which would include the regulatory and institutional barriers, the economic barriers, both financial and market, the behavioral bar barriers. Um, the more detailed information, again, is presented um, in the study itself. However, the regulatory barriers would include the lack of um, extensive regulatory system, the discrepancy between the national and regional and sometimes local norms that are existing, the delays in adopting certain policies, the absence of enforcement mechanism and uh, absence or lack of incentives, again, the frequent changes in certain regulations, the institutional barriers that are also present, um, that would in, include the absence of dedicated institution, the coordination failures, sometimes lack of transparency or lack of control over the implementation, uh, actual implementation, um, then the lack of um, guidance on the um, energy, uh, energy conservation policy. The economic barriers would also um, include the prolonging, prolonging payback time and downsizing um, the internal rate of return on investments. In principle, the perception on the high risk for investor to, um, in, to invest in energy efficiency projects, the limited access to capital, um, sometimes the transaction costs, the energy subsidies, presence of energy subsidies. The behavioral barriers um, also exist and um, they include the low awareness on energy efficiency benefits and the individual level, the low uh, trust or a lack of trust in energy efficiency measures in principle. Sometimes it's lack of knowledge among uh, different uh, services, among architects, for example, uh, to incorporate the energy efficiency um, measures. So uh, the draft recommendations um, are listed also in the same uh, manner that uh, the principles of uh, the framework guidelines are in indicated. So the, the draft recommendations of strategic nature include that the government should include to develop a comprehensive and long-term building code strategy. They should ensure the introduction of performance-based approach in the building um, energy codes, uh, that the building codes should be more frequently evaluated, revised, and improved, even if they were already adopted. Um, the energy efficiency policy should be developed and adjust uh, to the regional or um, local context. The government should also uh, set up targets for increasing the higher share of, uh, of um, high-performing buildings, um, the uh, improved energy performance of building components should be also a target, um, and that sustain the sustainable high-performance construction know-how should be introduced also um, in uh, some curriculum of, in some countries. The in terms of design and construction, the draft uh, recommendations include that the government should aim more for net zero energy consumption in new buildings, that the comprehensive retrofits of existing buildings should be planned also that the minimum energy performance standard should become mandatory for both in, uh, the new construction and existing buildings, that high cost of energy efficiency technologies should not be a, a problem for introducing energy efficiency measures and therefore to encourage countries, um, the government to introduce uh, reductions or tax exemptions or other incentives for uh, energy efficiency, energy efficient technologies. Uh, the financial incentives also could be more introduced in uh, some countries and uh, also, in terms of management, 
the draft recommendation includes that the energy agency should be included in those countries where they do not exist currently. The data on energy demand should be available also to better measure the implementation of energy efficiency policies. And uh, that the energy performance certification should be applied in all countries and some countries, in many countries, it was already uh, the case, however, not in all countries. Um, and that also there should be the uh, efforts to better develop, to develop or improve the ESCO market in many countries. It's also um, have, is not developed at all or not functional at all. Uh, that the and again the question of energy pricing can can be considered as a tool for influencing the energy uh, use behavior. The, then uh, it's also the low interest rates for the energy efficiency technologies should be introduced as an important instrument to promote energy efficiency um, and uh, energy efficiency improvements. I will stop here. Uh, um, I think I would like to thank you for your attention. And I would like uh, you one more time to review, to verify the information that presented in this draft study. I know that some of you already had provided the comments, updates, and corrections to some information, the data which is presented there. I would like to thank you particularly for these. And these, these uh, corrections and updates will be introduced in the revised version. I would like also to invite you to comment, to provide um, your um, suggestions for the draft for the draft recommendations of this study. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nadezhda. I think it was a very good overview of the uh, of the gap analysis that Nadezhda drafted, and I would also like to join her in thanking those of you and others who have provided comments and additional information for the gap analysis. Uh, uh, as I already put in the chat and I ask you again, please, if you have questions or comments on this presentation or on the presentations that we will hear now, uh, uh, please write them in the chat. You can write it in English or Russian. Uh, and uh, we will monitor the chat and uh, um, at probably the end of this session, we'll have a discussion and uh, question and answer session, and uh, we will use what you put in the chat. There were some questions already for the uh, links and for the presentations. Presentations will all be posted at the workshop web page, and uh, the current version of the draft gap analysis is also posted there as well as on the main uh, web page of the project. Uh, with this, I would like to give the floor now to uh, uh, the colleague uh, from, uh, sorry, from Moldova, to uh, Mr. Sergio Robo, uh, who will present uh, his preliminary findings uh, on the national, of the national study uh, of the more detailed gap analysis in the Republic of Moldova. Uh, Sergio, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for this opportunity and for this uh, event. And uh, of course, uh, I would like to say that um, for the Republic of Moldova, this study it is, of course, at the its finalization level and any comments are very, very welcome. And uh, first of all, if it comes to electricity consumption of, of this country and uh, why we focus on the, on the building sector in this country, we can observe that the um, residential service and commercial um, sector consume about 78% um, uh, of electricity in, in, uh, in this uh, country. And uh, this is a huge amount for, for, uh, for a country like Moldova. What is it important to underline here that, uh, in fact, the, the electricity consumption per, per capita is not big in, in this country. The, the reason here it is that the, of the low industrial activity and the electricity consumption in, in another sectors like industry, agriculture, and so on. If, it, if we speak about the final energy consumption, again, we can observe that 56% um, 
of uh, final energy in the country is going to residential service and commercial buildings, which is again a huge amount of energy. And if it comes to transport sector, this is already transport fuel, gasoline, diesel, and so on. And again, this is the area where, where it is important to, to, to pay attention. Now, in order to, to carry out the national study, we propose to, to apply the holistic approach of energy efficiency in buildings. How we did try to, to, to have this, we did a look at the NDC true of the country. We have a look at this commitment, which is very high ambitious com commitment for the Moldova, which tries to, to implement at the national level the Paris Agreement commitment of the country, and of course, to contribute to agenda for sustainable development. And um, these commitments should be revised or observed into the national legislation. Here, of course, the situation is not that bad because in Moldova we have a national energy efficiency action plan, we have law on energy efficiency, and we have law on energy performance of the buildings, which indicates the, the national, national uh, um, ambitions for this country. Now, National legislation later on, it is transposed into the building codes, and construction norms and regulations that, uh, that shows the, the, what exactly amount of energy it is recommended to be used in the, in the buildings. And of course, these codes together with uh, applied in the, in the, on the field will lead to a green city or passive design integrated into urban uh, planning. For example, if we, we, if we speak about digitalization, we know that the digital, digitalization with the right policies enables a progression to optimizing the energy of the whole system and enabling, enabling of optimum distributed energy system with a huge amount of renewable energy. In this case, if we, we look at the, at the building level, of course, we know that the digitalization connects and coordinate devices and equipment leading to a greater energy efficiency gains. The same digitization connect, build, connected buildings communicate with grid, providing the new sources of flexible load. And this flexible load, if it goes to the so renewable energy sources, more intermittent renewables are able to be used when they are available, making the system more efficient and stable. And here, of course, uh, it goes to both directions, from, from the system to the buildings and course, and of course, uh, from, the, from the building to the system. So the message here is that to have a holistic approach and, and to look uh, at the role or impact of the national policy to building calls and and opposite. So if it, if we, it comes to to international international commitment of the country, as we mentioned, we have of course uh, commitment for a Paris Agreement, and of course and we do have uh, Moldova as a member state of the Energy Community Treaty. And um, if it if we speak about uh, policy driver, it is EU Moldova Association Agreement. And here we have a double commitments, which is a commitment to United Nations framework of climate change. Now it is about emissions. And of course, we have a commitment to energy community treaty, which is energy efficiency, and which is Ministry of Economy and Infrastructure. Now, at the national level, uh, energy strategy, together with national energy efficiency action plans, YAPS, have very clear message on the amount of the energy to be to be reduced by 2023 and 2030 according to the strategy and this commitment is according to the ministry of economy of, of uh, and, and infrastructure if it comes to to environmental commitment or to co2 emissions then it is ministry of agriculture regional development and environment with the uh, low emission development strategy and its action plan. So uh, what is the message here? It is that uh, 
we have a duality of commitments in this country. And of course, we have energy efficiency agency which implement the, the policy at the local level. If it comes to building components and, uh, and uh, equipment, of course, the key policy document, it is regulation on energy audit and law on energy labeling of energy related products. And um, the, the indicators for this policy document, it is energy efficiency indicators and energy labeling of the, of the equipment. If it comes to public and private buildings, and residential buildings, we do have law on energy performance of the buildings that sets very clear the message on um, how the, the, the energy performance in the buildings should be implemented at the different stage of the project development. And we have governmental decision on the procedure on energy performance certification of the buildings in buildings units. So uh, the, 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 the indicator and ob objective of these two kinds of buildings, private and, and public, it is to commit to nearly zero energy buildings and to have energy certification of the building. If it comes to public buildings, of course, this, uh, this is two sources of financing of these activities. It is National Fund for Regional Development, if we speak about uh, big buildings, regional hospitals and regional buildings, and Fund for Energy Efficiency, if we speak about uh, other public buildings. But also the Energy Efficiency Agency did provide in the past some support for uh, implementation of uh, high efficient biomass boilers in the country. And this is again a, a success story for this, uh, for this country. If it comes later to the, to the private buildings, the, the problem here is that energy certification system, it is not integrated into the, the market. And I will come back to this once again. Now, if we, go, if we, we, we do a deep dive into the national legislation, again, we have law on energy efficiency that implement European directives and um, establish a framework for setting of eco-design requirements for energy-related products. Then, of course, we do have uh, energy, we have law on dwellings that was adopted in 2015 and entered in 2015 again, except for, for provision of relating to energy performance of buildings with uh, reference to ventilation, cooling and lighting. Now, law on eco-design requirements applicable for uh, energy related product is being supported by regulation in the country, which establish requirements for equipment such as household, dishwashers, air conditioning and so on. And uh, we have regulation of uh, eco-design applicable to products with uh, energy impact. And again, the, the, this regulation will transpose the European EU, EU regulation in this, uh, in this area. If it comes back to National Energy Efficiency Action Plan, which is uh, adopted in, in this country, we have very clear targets for buildings of savings uh, for residential buildings and for public buildings, how much uh, uh, energy could be saved or should be saved by end of this year, clearly stipulated in this document. And law on energy performance of the buildings also has one very clear message about near zero buildings. And uh, according to this law, year 2021, it is the year where, when uh, all new buildings must be according to the NIZEP uh, procedure. Now, uh, if it comes to equipment, we have law on energy labeling on energy related products, and it is it rel relates to, to all the household equipment. Now, if it comes to energy performance certification, we have uh, the, the governmental decision that regulates the procedure on energy performance certification in buildings. And also we do have secondary normatives and regulations that uh, present the methodology and conversion factors for energy units to calculate the energy performance of the buildings. Uh, the, another subject, which is energy audit. Again, it is uh, 
it is a well developed in this country. We have a regulation on energy audit. We have people ex, um, uh, trained energy auditors in the country. And um, the, the design of thermal protection of the building, it is a document that states the practical code and contains methods on design and calculation of thermal and technical characteristics of the buildings. And also that we have secondary norms that regulates the technical implementation rules for exterior and internal thermal insulation of the building and the regulation on energy audit of existing buildings and heating for heating and domestic hot water. Now, the general, generally speaking, the situation is not bad, but something is, doesn't work. So if it comes to SWOT analysis, we observe that we do have developed framework legislation, including law on energy efficiency and NAPS. We do have adopted building energy codes. We do have law on energy performance in the buildings and energy labeling requirements. And also we do have energy efficiency agency with the fund that uh, promote, that, that has incentives mainly for public buildings for implementation of energy efficiency uh, project, including street lighting. What is, what doesn't work perfectly? We don't have uh, ESCO in this country, although some progress is done. And uh, again, I must say that, uh, that the UNDP did a great job in this area in the past but the market was not ready to absorb or, or to implement this, uh, this new mechanism. Residential sector is the highest energy consumer. And this is a, a big challenge because we need to work with the uh, homeowner associations. And it is very difficult to, to convince people about the benefits of energy efficiency because it costs and uh, when it comes to commitment, yes, people understand that it will be very good, but when it comes to the payment, it is a little bit of change. Now, heat supply system technology, it is in, in transition phase. Uh, this is good and bad in the same time because um, cogeneration, it is uh, in place in this country. And uh, what, what, what district heating companies are doing now they do try to improve the heat to electricity ratio of production of energy at the CHPs. So, so for example, now we produce one to three, it means one kilowatt hour of electricity, it means three kilowatt hour of heat. New technologies that are implemented now, it is one to one. And this is, this is a great step because uh, we import 80% of electricity and there is a huge demand to, to improve the national um, energy security target. And we have high energy consumption of existing building stock, of course, especially for, for old buildings. Sergio, you have two more minutes. Okay, thanks. We have opportunities, measure access to district heating, we have adopted standard and Three, it is absence of mandatory energy performance, absence of penalties, technical readiness is missing for implementation of new technologies and financial instruments. So when it comes to compare the UNIC framework requirements, national energy indicators, generally it looks good, but there is one very specific sentence into the energy and into the law. It says that Yes, we, we would like to have zero by 2021 if technically, economically, and functionally it is feasible, which is a little bit of contradictory because the objective is not, uh, it is a little bit contradictory. So we have some um, legal capacity development and technology investment and financial incentives that are uh, missing in this country. And we do have recommendations. So what we do recommend, it is to energy efficiency targets, including of buildings, to be updated according to NDC, National Climate Change uh, Targets. Renewable energy consideration to be mandatory for building design and certification. Certification of existing residential and non-residential buildings to be implemented into the market model 
it, uh, the minimum energy performance standards should be more ambitious for both new and existing buildings. To introduce the initial incentives for purchase of existing of energy saving technologies. Digital tools to be considered to enhance flexibility and clear energy development. We need financial incentives and we need education or public awareness programs to, to promote more actively the, the energy efficiency implementation into the public buildings. Uh, all buildings. This is this is all my my presentation. I'm open for for questions, and I would like to underline once again that uh, yes, we understand that this is a, this is a big big uh, big work, big study, and uh, any inputs and comments are highly appreciated and very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergio. Thank you. I think it's critically important for the. Uh, for this study to have these national in-depth studies. And our colleagues from Moldova, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan are providing exactly that. Again, we are still at the draft um, stage, but it is, uh, it is a draft that is reasonably close to being completed. So again, uh, we will be uh, sharing the uh, draft studies on our website and you will be able also to look at them. Uh, thank you, Sergio. Uh, I will now give the floor to Andrea Ohanian, who will speak uh, on the draft national study for Armenia. Uh, he will speak on behalf of Ani Rafian, who could not join us today as she is sick. Uh, and I understand, Nadezhda, that you will be sharing the screen with Andre's presentation. Andre, the floor is yours. Um, Andre, uh, could you please turn on your? Yeah, button? yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, greetings, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and and you, you, will have, you will have ten minutes, Andre. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speed up. Yeah, sure, Thank sure. Um, so, so I'll, I'll give you a quick snapshot of what we have in terms of laws, regulations, and, and building codes in Armenia. Uh, what are the, what are the uh, spotted gaps in terms of compliance with EPDs? Uh, and then um, I'll discuss about uh, the gaps uh, um, uh, we do have you know, in terms of uh, existing energy efficiency standards and buildings. Uh, and their implementation issues in Armenia, and we'll compare them against uh, uh, framework guidelines for energy efficiency standards and buildings. So, um, if we can start, Nadezhda. Um, um, so, we do have some some uh, building codes requirements in Armenia. Uh, most notably, we are looking at thermal performance of buildings. Um, and then uh, in 2008, there was a UNDPGEF project, a project uh, which, which uh, a, a corresponding document was developed back then. Uh, in 2009, there were some proposals for energy audit certification of residential buildings. They were developed under the same project, under the same UNDPGEF project. Uh, there are some improvements being made in those documents. Nowadays, um, next one, Nadezhda, next slide. Yeah, uh, so we are mainly looking at these four um, building codes, which are uh, in relates to energy efficiency standards and legislation. Um, so we do have this thermal protection of buildings, which was issued back in 2016. Uh, there was an, an older version of that which was building thermophysics. Uh, we have this construction climatology, 
uh, which defines the heating degree days, means, and et cetera, solar radiations. And um, recently, we adopted uh, artificial and natural lighting. Code these, all these code, uh, codes are, are um, considered construction codes, uh, building codes, and are mandatory. In addition to these um, four um, normatives, uh, we do have two national standards uh, dated to dated back to 2013 and 2016. Uh, again, notable here is, is uh, AST Omni Standard 362-2013, which um, uh, relates to building energy passport and defines the energy classes of the buildings. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we do have a couple of other government uh, decisions and rules. Uh, the important one here, which I would like to mention and highlight is uh, the government decision number um, uh, 1504, uh, which was adopted uh, back in 2014. That um, um, which uh, which um, states that all the all the uh, all the construction or reconstruction rehabilitation works which are being um, done uh, under state funds should have embedded energy efficiency measures in the whole package. Uh, this this is this is a huge step, uh, which makes it uh, a compulsory thing for 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 uh, different state funded entities um, or or community uh, entities uh, when they are dealing with renovations to uh, focus on energy efficiency improvement measures. Um, then we have this law on energy saving and renewable energy, which was which has been amended uh, uh, in 2016 and 2017. Uh, we have this energy law. Um, three versions have been. Um, we have three amendment uh, amended versions, and also we have uh, NAPS, National Pro uh, National Energy Action, uh, National Energy Efficiency Action Plans, and also we have this um, National Program on Energy Saving and Renewable Energy, uh, uh, which dates back to 20, uh, 2007. Next one. Yeah. So this one as um, the the I mean the standard three sixty two twenty thirteen, which uh, um, uh, provides the guidance and methodology for for preparation of the building energy passport the calculation methodology set. And as a result, it generates to uh, generates the energy class of the building. Uh, based on this, and based on the uh, existing laws, the the buildings in Armenia should comply with the C class, which is which is the normal so-called normal class, and anything above um, C plus grade or class is considered energy. energy intensity in residential and uh, in in, um, in residential residential and public buildings um, so uh, we are mainly looking at natural gas consumption um, uh, where um, which is which is the main heat source uh, the, um, energy source for 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 uh, heating uh, heating energy consumption. Um, you see our uh, housing stock balance um, as of 2017. Um, um, next slide, please. Yeah, here, here is the here is the here is the um, housing stock in numbers based on uh, according to uh, according to statistics uh, by 2017. Is at 2017. 
So uh, as I told you, we have we are looking at um, natural gas as the main fuel uh, being used for households. And uh, an important thing is to bear in mind here in Armenia, we are looking at uh, around uh, one third of the of the um, energy in Armenia is being used in, in uh, residential sector, which which is which is uh, quite a uh, big number relatively. The next uh, one. What our office the real name? So, um, uh, as I told you, we have around 19,000 buildings in Armenia. Uh, most of them have been built during Soviet era. Um, and it's that though none of those have any energy efficiency or insulation components embedded in them. Um, we, we have, uh, most of them are, are stone buildings. So stone meaning the local stone, tufa stone. Um, we have reinforced concrete buildings and, and precast concrete buildings, precast panel buildings. Uh, um, unfortunately, due to not having any any you know, insulation in building shell components, we are looking at uh, relatively high numbers in terms of um, energy consumption. Again, this relates to mainly um, heat demand, heat energy consumption. We are looking at uh, roughly uh, uh, 100, uh, somewhere around 185, uh, or somewhere around, I'm in a range of 172 to 120 kilowatt hours per square meter per annum. Next one. Um, so besides besides the heat, um, we do need to consider other other uh, other portions such as domestic hot water, um, district heating, HVAC, um, lighting appliances. Um, uh, uh, Andre, you have two minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let me just speed up. Uh, we do not have. Um, uh, hot water supply uh, um, central systems in Armenia, mostly district heating is, is missing. Uh, we do not have central, centralized uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, mainly in, in residential or public buildings. Uh, no uh, restriction on wattage of lamps and etc. are defined in, in codes. Um, as we are short in time, I would ask to jump into the Last slide. Um, so, so we need we, we we do have some some barriers, some gaps. We do not have ESCOs in Armenia, uh, um, although there have been some practices on the Kazesco model, but uh, we do not have any. An energy, energy performance contract or ESCO energy service company in Armenia. Um, we do need to, uh, these are the gaps that have been outlined. Now, we need to complete legal regulatory reforms and enforcement, insufficient technical and institutional capacities, uh, regular and relationship promoters. Um, we do not have affordable or we lack affordable financing schemes for boosting the investments in, in uh, building energy efficiency measures. Um, there are some barriers and uh, for country uh, There are some, uh, there, is a, there is a huge gap in, in multi-apartment residential buildings in terms of um, uh, pushing investments, injecting the investments in, uh, relates to energy efficiency improvements. And those are uh, have been discussed in detail in the in the report content. Uh, this is as soon as I could uh, finish up. If there are any questions or, or any unclear portions, I'm I'm happy to address. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we are a little bit uh, late with <coughs> our, our presentations. Uh, we have one more 
coming from Kyrgyzstan. And I would like to, <coughs> apologies, I would like to ask uh, Mikhail Toropov uh, to keep to the maximum of 10 minutes. I would also suggest to Inga uh, that the break that is announced in the agenda that we actually skip it so we have time for the second session. And we need a little bit of time also for the questions and answers. We don't have many. There was one from Leonid Danilevsky from Belarus. Uh, and uh, I think there is a, a conversation in the chat, so maybe that would be sufficient. Uh, so with that, many thanks to Andre uh, and for this presentation on Armenia. And uh, now, uh, Mikhail Toropov, please, the floor is yours. Uh, National study on Kyrgyzstan. And again, please keep it, keep it to a maximum of 10 minutes, less if possible. Thank you, Alec, and uh, good day to everybody again. I would like uh, briefly introduce uh, our findings on uh, the project uh, on the Kyrgyz Republic. And uh, I would like briefly introduce the Republic. It has quite a, a small area, but uh, very different climate zones with different uh, altitudes above sea levels and uh, uh, quite a huge uh, range of temperature in uh, coldest place like about 50 degrees uh, below zero and uh, more than 40 in summertime and uh, we have uh, quite a wide range of uh, climatic conditions I would highlight it. Uh, here I presented uh, the dynamics of uh, population change in the Republic and uh, it shows that uh, we have a kind of growth about 2% a year and uh, for sure it uh, causes uh, uh, demand on energy and actually we have the, the growth uh, of the demand on energy and uh, actually we are at the kind of uh, uh, energy crisis now because most of uh, actually it concerns mostly to electricity as uh, most of our electricity produces in hydropower plants and uh, now we have uh, like low water period and uh, uh, we have uh, the lack of electricity now. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, international obligations on electricity export, while nowadays we are importing uh, electricity from neighboring countries. That is why uh, uh, the point of energy safe and uh, energy efficiency is quite urgent at, in our conditions. And here I have a, a like a overview of uh, the buildings, actually residential buildings, statistics in uh, our Republic. And actually, as uh, colleagues al already mentioned for Moldova, for example, uh, most of uh, our power consumption uh, is uh, uh, consumed by uh, residential uh, sector let's say as we have very small industry so just uh, some uh, uh, like uh, business uh, uh, and the entertainment actually that is uh, not residential sector and uh, all the rest and uh, most part of the energy is consumed by uh, residential sector. Uh, here I have uh, like uh, uh, amount of buildings uh, uh, or different types of uh, uh, non-residential buildings uh, like public buildings uh, in every oblast of the Republic uh, and uh, the uh, population in the same oblasts are 
uh, noted uh, shown here. And uh, uh, here I will highlight uh, the price uh, for energy. Uh, in the left side listed different uh, types of energy like and uh, that uh, people commonly use to provide the energy to cover energy need like uh, even centralized hot water centralized heat natural gas coil uh, electricity and that is uh, then I got it these uh, um, prices to one kilowatt hour and the right uh, column showing the uh, price uh, of one kilowatt hour of different uh, types of energy let's say and uh, here we have range from uh, two a little more than two somed and uh, as a uh, highest and uh, about 80 uh, teen, uh, as the lowest this one is uh, that is two makes like about three uh, usd um, us cents uh, three uh, three cents and uh, here, uh, for a kind of comparison, I stated uh, the uh, consumption uh, multi apartment buildings, and here in the center, a right a red column showing the uh, consumption per one uh, square meter. That is about uh, 250 uh, kilowatt hours per year. That is quite high and much higher than we have in the frame document, actually. For the comparison countries, and uh, at the left side we have Norway, and, that, uh, and all these uh, uh, countries Um, it's that uh, technically it will consume square meter. And uh, here uh, we have an assessment from uh, actually World Bank, and uh, it shows that uh, specific investments Mikhail, we have problems with your connection. Uh, let me disconnect my uh, video maybe it will help uh can you hear me now uh yes better and, and you have two minutes okay uh just uh, comparing Uh, uh, Mikhail, you are breaking up all the time. Uh, I, mm. I, I think we will have, uh, yeah, let's have this summary, please. Uh, so summarizing, uh, we have uh, low, low energy prices and uh, Actually, it's uh, one of the key issues uh, why we don't have, for example, ESCO or, or uh, very poor developers, I would say. Poor people with low income is another issue. 
on one hand, and it kind of No, I think the connection and, connection yeah. is not good. Uh, uh, so chips, but not all. Uh, Mikhail, I think it's it's not going very well. I believe we would have to uh, uh, to stop uh, this presentation because of the technical problems. But the presentation will be uh, posted on our web page. And if you have any questions to Mikhail, please put them in the chat. Any questions for uh, the study on Kyrgyzstan? Uh, we are a little bit um, uh, tight with our time. We are uh, over the uh, schedule. Uh, so um, a question to all participants. Any questions to um, uh, Nadezhda or uh, uh, Sergio or Andre or Mikhail? Mikhail probably in, in chat only. Uh, there was some uh, discussion uh, regarding the building classes between Leonid Danilevsky and Vahram Jalalan uh, about the building classes in Armenia. I don't know if uh, Vahram or Andre uh, wish to, uh, to speak so everybody could, uh, could hear that, not just read that. Uh, Vahram, would you like to take the floor? Uh, I I, th I think not. Uh, um, Oleg, if, if if you just can repeat the question because it's in Russian, unfortunately uh, I cannot. Andre, okay. Uh, Vahram was answering it. Uh, for the question itself, uh, uh, okay. Let me uh, uh, read it in Russian and then you listen to uh, the interpretation. Uh, Varmini, очень подробно... In Armenia, there is a very detailed uh, scale of energy efficiency and ex exact uh, measurement of indicators does not allow you to identify the belonging of each building to a concrete class of uh, this classification. Actually, I that so far they have been, they have not been any difficulty in a, uh, a identification of the building class, uh, but there was also some more discussion afterwards. Uh, and uh, Leonid also said, again, I will be reading in Russian, so you listen to interpretation. For the determination of the class of the building, it is important to present the results of measurements in line with the conditions of exploitation of the building. The initial information is received with certain margin of error, and this is where the um, error comes in determining the um, building class. Um, 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 unfortunately, I couldn't uh, get uh, get a translation. Okay. Uh, Vahram, maybe you could uh, respond. Well, but um, I'm, I'm, to be brief, um, I think I got the question uh, at least to some extent. Um, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the energy classes which we have, which we do have in Armenia are only uh, relevant for uh, energy, uh, for useful energy for heat and ventilation. It doesn't take into account uh, other components such as domestic hot water, lighting, um, HVAC, and etc. And it's in, in contradiction with EPB requirements, where EPB looks at uh, looks at primary energy. So we are looking at useful energy Def defining the energy class based on what we have it's actually um, um, on the basis of russian methodology methodology msn 
Uh, so uh, it just defines the, the specific um, um, kilowatt hour per square meter. And uh, that the energy class is being defined based on uh, kilowatt hour per cubic meter. There was a specific num um, value. So based on the, the, the uh, deviation from that uh, base number defines the energy classes. But again, it needs a lot of improvement and it can be, fast and it can be fostered a lot. So that besides having other components like appliances, domestic hot water and etc., renewable CO2 emissions, use for, uh, final energy, primary energy can be traced and shown and generated from the methodology. I hope that that helped, although I didn't get the question very well. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Uh, Bahram, any comment from you? Uh, you are still muted. I don't know if you can unmute yourself or is there a problem? No, I guess not. Um, uh, I see there were some comments from Mikhail Toropov on the differences between the uh, building classes in Kyrgyzstan and Armenia. Uh, and uh, mm, there is also a note from him saying that it would be good to use this project or maybe continuation of this project uh, also for harmonization or unification of the uh, norms and regulations. Um, I think with this, since we are already uh, 10 minutes into the time that was allocated initially for the uh, session for the UNDP project in Moldova. I think we will finish this session. I would like to thank uh, all speakers, Nadezhda, uh, Mikhail, Andre, and Sergio. Uh, thank you for your presentations. Uh, thank you for the discussion and thank you to Leonid Danilevsky from Belarus for uh, raising those questions. Uh, and more questions could be uh, asked uh, later. As well, uh, please, you have uh, the website and also uh, Nadezhda will share a little bit later, closer to the end, uh, some other uh, opportunities uh, for interaction. I see uh, one hand from uh, Konstantin. Um, I cannot see the last name, unfortunately. Uh, Konstantin. Uh, Konstantin. Uh, uh, if, if you could be brief, because we would then need to go to the next session, uh, please unmute yourself and speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, dear speakers, uh, dear organizers. Let me uh, touch a few more uh, gaps related to energy efficiency in buildings in Moldova, particularly. Uh, were mentioned about uh, secondary, uh, secondary normatives or secondary acts to be used when energy performance of buildings uh, to be certified. But I would like to say that even if uh, methodology for, for uh, calculation of energy performance exists and, uh, and there is a software to calculate that, the existing methodology does not um, approach uh, ventilation, air conditioning and lighting at all. So there is uh, uh, a draft developed, but but not uh, has not official statute yet. This is first. Second, when, when we use normatives, construction normatives, often they refer to standards, euro norms, ISO standards, and uh, uh, more often, it refers when we design energy efficiency uh, construction uh, measures, different nodes on envelope and so on. And very often, designers did not buy these standards. They just found find this in internet. Some countries, um, when transpose ISO standards, they publish them. For 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 instance, GOST standards. Uh, they also has uh, ISO transposed. But the problem is that uh, 
some countries uh, sometimes uh, do not transpose the original provision of, of, uh, of ISO standard. And this is particular uh, uh, example for, for ghosts in, in Russia. And one more gap. Ah, and, and here the, the message is that all experts, specialists involved in energy efficiency uh, measures to be implemented in buildings like auditors or uh, energy certificators or all, all kinds of this of this specialist in my personal view should have access to to these standards in a free in a free uh, uh, model free way i mean without uh, pay fees because this is really uh, a gap when we go uh, down in implementation. And the last one which I would, would like to refer is the internal conflict between these normatives and the so-called sanitary or um, hygienic, hygienic norms. In Russian, it is um, sanitarna epidemiologiski norma. What are under Ministry of uh, Health Cares uh, and, and very exactly points here. Uh, these norms, when we refer to public buildings uh, like uh, educational, does not allow use of LED lamps, does not allow use mechanical ventilation, but in the same time we have uh, construction normatives related to energy, energy efficiency, which oblige us to, to make uh, things uh, or buildings as efficient as possible. And I am happy to see here in participants representatives of, of, of uh, Moldovan authorities who I uh, propose or suggest to, to, to uh, approach this, uh, these uh, issues which uh, were faced when, uh, when first uh, 30, uh, 30 um, buildings started now to be designed um, energy efficiency measures in Moldova, uh, 30 Big Constantine, I think I think we will have to stop. We we are very late, and I don't want our colleagues from UNDP Moldova to have their session cut short. I apologize. Thank, thank you, you thank you. Sorry, this is what all what I was want to like to to mention. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I see there is also a request from Leonid, but I kindly ask Leonid uh, if that could be done after the session uh that is that was supposed to start actually 15 minutes ago uh so if we have time at the end uh i will give the floor uh, to leonid uh thank you uh inga i suggest you take it over from me now and uh, we go to session two thank you thank you Oleg. Uh, indeed for the sake of the time let's uh, let's go directly to the session two and hopefully at the end of the session we'll have enough time to discuss even the questions that Konstantin has raised. So um, uh, the session two is about presenting the UNDP Moldova initiatives to support energy efficiency in buildings and uh, we have uh, the first speaker is Elena Rastey uh, who uh, works as an architect uh, and in sustainability and green building certification schemes at both national and international level. She is the board member of the Green Building Council in Romania and also a member of the board of director of the Zero Waste uh, Europe. Um, she uh, has supported uh, uh, UNDP and uh, uh, the Ministry of Economy and Infrastructure in developing the uh, green building design code and uh, today we'll hear more about uh, the steps for implementation of the green building certification system in Moldova. Elena, you have the floor. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Um, in the minutes to follow, um, I will present a general overview of the uh, green code developed at the initiative of UNDP Moldova, Ministry of Economy and Infrastructure with the support of Romania Green Building Council and the Technical University of Civil Engineering Bucharest. The tools that uh, I'm going to detail, the, uh, to detail are, uh, we are under the umbrella of the green design code. 
uh, which entails a holistic approach and were designed considering the climate, local issues, uh, social and economic situation in uh, Republika Moldova at local and national level. And these uh, tools, uh, complementary tools are as follows. We have a local uh, legislation uh, on the prevention and uh, pr uh, reduction of pollution during the construction stage that will be applied to all new buildings and major renovation in Chisinau. This is pending approval. We have two codes of practice in construction, one focused on the design of green buildings and the other on the green planning. Uh, the, this is in uh, the stage of uh, an advanced stage pending approval. And we have a national voluntary certification system, green design and construction managed by Green City Lab. The objective, the objective is um, to support the design, the building operation of better, healthier and sustainable buildings. Now, why, uh, why do we need um, uh, why do we need uh, this certification, uh, these tools for Republika Moldova? First of all, because Moldova is one of the few European countries with little instruments that encourage transition towards sustainability, and because green buildings are an essential component of any sustainable development plan, plan regardless of the scale it is, it applies. Also, because it means adjusting to European, adjusting to European standards and uh, um, uh, div sustainable development, BI sustainable development commitments. Therefore, we consider that the green design code is an important step that shows to the EU authorities the level of growing maturity and responsibility and has the potential to prepare the uh, way to EU inclusion for Republic of Moldova. Also, we must consider that the High uh, higher housing demand uh, um, uh, means um, uh, a grow uh, uh, in the construction uh, industry. Therefore, um, it's better to uh, learn from the mistakes of other countries and uh, have these codes implemented and adapted in order for better buildings to be uh, built uh, in the near future. And maybe because of the most important uh, reason of all, people need healthier, energy efficient homes with less burden of, of on the um, resources and the environment. Now, what we identified in our research uh, as um, uh, environmental factors, some of the environmental factors that we considered is uh, specific for Republic of Moldova is the soil erosion, the groundwater pollution, the low quality of water, drink, drinking water, the degradation of biodiversity, the inefficient management of household and industrial waste, the persisting uh, organic pollutants, uh, air pollution during the construction stage and disease caused by the uh, low quality of indoor air quality in buildings, regardless if we talk homes or if we talk uh, buildings we work in. In terms of benefits, uh, I will not get into a lot of details, but I have three pages of benefits here. Benefits for public authorities. And one important is uh, um, looking at the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, um, uh, stimulating the local economy, um, uh, optimized waste management practices, urban regeneration practices, energy efficiency and water management, and also intergenerational equity based on the fact that the use of abundant and renewable building materials in these new buildings that will follow the um, um, certification code, the codes, the green code or the green, the, the green building certification system. For the developer and for the owner, we are looking at uh, optimized design and construction costs. We're looking at the uh, increased rental rates for buildings. Uh, according to some uh, international studies for up to 24.9%. We are looking at uh, uh, improved CSR, uh, uh, perceived higher value in sales price, in rental. And when we talk about benefits for the occupant, we look at superior quality for the indoor uh, environment, health and productivity at work. Um, improved working atmosphere and comfort, lower operating costs, lower utility bills, and higher resale value. All these were approved already in countries with a tradition of up to 20 years in implementing green building certification schemes. 
Now, financial implications is, is, is important. I mean, this is the scare factor we, we see at the most of the developers out there. Uh, how much does it cost to build green, to build better? Well, based on the experience in Romania as well, well, we have over 10,000 homes certified already through the national certification system, green homes, which is an amount of 1.5 uh, uh, billion euros. Um, we look at up to 10% premium investment in hard cost. That's all. It's so, so it's, it's uh, on long term, um, um, along with uh, the, num the rising in, uh, in the number of buildings, the cost will decline. So um, um, uh, we see the opportunity in Republic of Moldova in, in, uh, in these terms as well, being pretty similar to what we have in Romania. In the next slides, I will talk about the need uh, uh, of each of the three tools I uh, briefly mentioned in the beginning. Um, and, and I will start with the certification system. Now, why do we need a certification system? And uh, I have to mention this is a voluntary certification system uh, because we need to, in order to improve a building or anything, we need to be able to measure it. Now, this voluntary certification system uh, is managed, going to be the, uh, managed by Green City Lab. Uh, it uh, entails a holistic approach, and it includes a matrix of best practices that applies to new construction, major refurbishments, renovations, retrofits, both single, multifamily residence, commercial, industrial buildings. And the aim is to become a credible environmental label for the building environment in Republic of Moldova. Now, when we're looking at what in a little bit in detail on what the certification systems looks at, we have these categories, the energy optimization. And here it is, I, I want to, to highlight the fact that the certification system is um, uh, requires, mandates the um, um, uh, use of the national methodology and the national legislation for uh, energy um, energy certification. Now um, we also uh, in the in the next category e indoor environmental quality and health and well-being. We're looking at daylight. We're looking at quality of views, acoustic performance, interior lighting, VOC, which is the, the uh, uh, volatile organic compounds in the finishing finishes in, in, in a building or in a home, which have an impact on the health of the, of the occupants, biophilic design, which, has a, which means integrating uh, uh, as many natural elements as possible in the uh, design of the interior units with focus on the, of the well-being of the occupant, accessibility, impact of refrigerants, emissions, water optimization, location of mobility, and here we talk about access to amenities, smart development, bicycle facilities, and uh, also ecology and biodiversity. And of course, in the, in the last, uh, we, we have to talk about this circular economy and building circularity materials and waste. We have, we, look, we, through, we, we encourage uh, natural, the use of natural materials, local, regional materials, um, the uh, uh, life cycle, uh, life cycle uh, uh, impacts of materials, the sourcing, fire, uh, fire resistance, and of, uh, operational waste. Here are some uh, uh, of the uh, a graphic uh, visualization of some of the measures I mentioned earlier. Um, and a few words about the, a few more words about the certification system. We're looking at uh, a voluntary uh, certification system administered by uh, Green City Lab. In some countries, uh, such as in uh, UK, where they, their national certification system is BRIAM, they have enforcement uh, for mandatory requirements from the local uh, uh, planning authorities. In Romania, for example, you have also uh, incentives like a tax reduction of 50% in uh, a variety of cities for buildings that are being certified and also we are looking at benefits for the final occupant who, who can uh, uh, um, obtain a green mortgage, a preferential interest rate up to one 
percent lower compared to the normal standard rates if the building is certified. The next, um, the next um, um, tool um, is uh, are the codes, the three practical codes uh, in uh, collaboration, uh, um, actually it, it, under the Minister of Environment and uh, uh, I'm sorry, Minister of Economy and Infrastructure. Um, the first one looks at the green design uh, of buildings. Um, and it emulates the uh, an adapt. It, it's an adapted version of the certification system with the voluntary certification system for buildings. And the urban design. Uh, uh, here we're looking at urban planning uh, for communities for group of buildings. Uh, that uh, uh, is also uh, there. The best practice, the criteria uh, in the certification system is also uh, presented here in an adapted version with focus on the responsibilities of urban planners, uh, planners and all the other experts involved in the process. The last um, um, tool, a very important tool um, that uh, we are, uh, I'm going to detail is the local policy for pollution prevention during construction stage. Now we have uh, uh, a, a number of uh, 38 measures, including um, measures to reduce uh, the uh, uh, air pollution a measure to reduce to lower to reduce to reduce the noise pollution or waste management uh, wa water and soil quality during the construction of uh, buildings new buildings or during the uh, major renovation of existing buildings now this considering that this is a local law and again it's pending approval but we are hoping to have a, a positive as uh, uh, in the near very near uh, uh, future um is uh, also um um comes with sanctions sanctions uh, applied by the municipality of Kishino. And I'm going to end my presentation with uh, an, uh, an overview and next steps. Uh, the voluntary, in the case of the voluntary certification system that I mentioned, the city, Green City Lab will manage the certification of buildings and communities, and also the education and accreditation of uh, specialists. We'll continue to develop the uh, education program to support the market transformation and what we could, we they could also do in this initial stage. Uh, also benefit from the existing platforms such as the uh, Romania Green Building Council professional platform of education with trainers and already uh, materials uh, pro uh, for um, certificate for certifying accredit accrediting a specialist in this sense. Um, Developing and certifying uh, the first projects, then benchmarking and monitoring the implementation and continued development um, um, after the pilot stage ends. In the case of the practical codes, uh, which are the pending approval and the local legislation pending approval, these are being uh, these are going to be in the in the practical codes uh, uh, managed by the Minister of Economy and Infrastructure and the local legislation by the Municipality of Kishino. And with this, I'm going to end my presentation. I do hope I was in time, and I'm uh, looking forward for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Elena, for being so time efficient. Um, and uh, thank you for presenting this ambitious initiative on green home certification standards uh, that, as we understand, is, uh, is a um, you know, future endeavor uh, and is being uh, now starting to be applied in the European countries, um, as you have presented. So um, it was really pleasant to see uh, you know, these uh, uh, images with the green buildings, literally, uh, with all these plants uh, on the rooftops and, um, uh, and, and, and showing how the buildings uh, shall be uh, connected and in synergy with the, with the surrounding environment. So uh, this is um, indeed um, uh, a more holistic approach that, uh, than uh, um, uh, 
has been discussed in the first part of, of, of this uh, event. And um, um, this holistic approach includes also the circularity and includes also the uh, indoor environment uh, and, of course, energy optimization. And, uh, of course, this energy efficiency standards should fit in into this larger uh, green uh, home certification standards. Uh, thank you for that. I would encourage participants uh, uh, to write uh, uh, questions in the chat. Um, so far, I don't see any, um, uh, any question. Uh, that's why I propose that we move uh, uh, to the next speaker, uh, which um, uh, would like to present uh, uh, one behavior experiment that has been uh, run uh, by the Republic uh, of Moldova recently. Um, and um, I would like to present you my colleague, Dumitru Vasilescu, uh, who has uh, uh, 14 years uh, of experience in development. Uh, he's the policy specialist in UNDP Moldova, and uh, uh, he's the leading Moldovan innovation lab uh, and supporting uh, in adopting innovative approaches in development with a focus on public sector innovations, engagement with private sector, alternative finance and citizens engagement for social good. Um, he's, uh, to be brief, he's responsible for testing fresh ideas and new perspectives uh, for Moldovan development. Uh, Dimitru, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Inga, for the introduction. Uh, yes, I, uh, we have uh, prepared a couple of slides here uh, around the uh, the largest in our region behavioral uh, uh, electricity experiment uh, through which uh, which nicely complement i think many of the discussions that we had today in this workshop and is also complementing let's say the efforts uh, done in the country in in in, uh, in terms of improving increasing energy efficiency uh, we we looked indeed uh, and this is this is an example of an experiment of an initiative of by UNDP Moldova and several partners that I will briefly mention uh, that is uh, that is looking at some let's call them soft uh, aspects or elements uh, related mostly less related to the infrastructure mostly related to uh, to consumption behavior and, and and the ways in which social norms were actually not not tested before, uh, so we were the first ones uh, on, on this small market to, to run this behavioral experiment. Uh, and uh, what I will be presenting to you are some of the, some, some glimpse, some, some uh, elements of, of the experiment, some of the results, but also I think what is equally relevant is uh, uh, are some aspects around how this is scalable and how this can, can be further uh, expanded in, in, in our local context and also why not in, 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 the, in the wider region. Um, so as I, as I promised, this, uh, this experiment is a, is a collaborative one. It was uh, implemented uh, in two steps. The step number one was in 20, throughout 2019 uh, in, a, in a partnership with the Behavioral Insights team from, from UK. Uh, and, and the Premier Energy at that time, uh, Union Fenosa, uh, Moldova, and, and us, uh, and the team of the Energy Environment Cluster of UNDP Moldova. Uh, and in the, at the second stage, uh, let's say we, we had a bit more partners involved in it, uh, also because we, we, in the second stage, uh, we focused mostly on um, on scaling up and expanding essentially the, the experiment to the whole of the, of the country. Uh, now about the, a little bit about the, the methodology of this experiment. So um, we, we uh, created our own baselines for, for this experiment, looking at the consumption uh, monthly consumption uh, of electricity uh, data uh, from the energy distribution company for the for the last uh, 60 months before the the start the de facto start of the experiment uh, we uh, we constructed let's say we we our data set of uh, the so-called less efficient households uh, was created. Uh, it included uh, for, for the municipality of Kishno, that was our area of interest. For the first step of the experiment, we've created our 
let's uh, let's say pool of of uh, those less efficient households of around 120,000 uh, households in Kishinau municipality uh, and out of this pool of of households and when, when i say uh, when we say uh, less efficient that means that they their average consumption for the for the last 3 months before the experiment was was uh, was uh, higher than the average consumption uh, in, in in the municipality uh, then out of that pool we randomly selected uh, about 20000 uh, households that were targeted um, in two different ways through two different behavioral letters uh, as you can see on on this slide on the left left hand uh, of the slide you have the first intervention letter or behavioral letter uh, we can briefly walk through it with you it's a letter in which we are essentially comparing those less efficient households to to their neighbors we are uh, targeting our let's say uh, uh, just developing this nominal letters to to those households by including data on on the average monthly electricity consumption for the last three months uh, in kilowatt hours so this is the so-called kilowatt hours norm letter and we are also indicating here what was the average uh, energy efficient neighbor con uh, consumption in kilowatts and there have been also some uh, basic tips on uh, say on how to be more energy efficient uh, at the level of households uh, some basic tips that are in both letters uh, we were uh, curious to see whether people um, how people per would perceive the same letter um, that is essentially uh, comparing the, the average electricity bill, the cost that is being paid for electricity per month. So we essentially, from the randomly selected uh, uh, group of about 20,000 households called the treatment group, uh, part half actually of that group. So that means 10,000 households received the kilowatt hours norm letter and the other half received the monetary norm. Let again, the, the only one difference in between the letters is, the, is, uh, is that it, uh, it compares uh, the households in the treatment group versus everything else, either in terms of kilowatt hours consumption or monetary uh, equivalent of that consumption. Uh, these letters were sent by a bad energy distribution company uh, at the start of the at the very start of the experiment. Uh, and uh, uh, and as I said, uh, uh, there were no no other differences, but but this uh, this comparison aspect in between the uh, the two letters. Again, our unit of observation, if you wish, uh, is the most granular possible unit and that that is the 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 households level uh, we had a, a, a control group uh, of more than 100,000 households uh, in this case control group meant for us that we we had a robust uh, a robust group of of uh, households um, uh, less efficient households that did not receive uh, any uh, of the two letters that I just mentioned, and that group was uh, was being observed. I mean, the consumption uh, was being observed throughout the duration of the experiment. Um, and for both groups, uh, actually, we looked at what is happening, what is the tendency, and what is happening to their consumption uh, two, three, four, and more months after the the end of of the first step of of the behavioral experiment. Now, what we've learned from it and how this is relevant, um, in, in principle, again, as, as uh, previously colleagues mentioned, uh, in a context in which there is a, a rather limited set of incentives for people to improve, let's say, uh, the electricity use at the households level, I think this, uh, this uh, results of the first step of the experiment in which we proved and evaluated uh, attributed, let's say, the, the results to the experiment. Uh, we proved that electricity consumption 
through this uh, type of an intervention can be reduced uh, by at least 2%. Um, that is one of the results, let's say, one of the main uh, results that is uh, really encouraging. And it, it also prompted us to look at the second stage of the, uh, of the, of the intervention at the scaling up of it. As you can see, we were not really uh, right in uh, uh, because people and the perception towards the two different letters, uh, the kilowatt hour norm letter and the monetary letter was insignificant uh, from, let's say, from the statistical perspective. So people perceived these letters in more or less similar ways and they consistently reduced uh, their consumption by around 2% in the months in which intervention took place and in the next, in the following months after the, uh, after the, the experiment. Uh, we put here indeed some of, as we see, some of the environmental impacts that we, we produced uh, through this first stage of the experiment, indeed the the overall control group, uh, let's, uh, and, uh, sorry, the overall treatment group uh, was uh, yeah, sufficiently large for the experiment to be, uh, to be robust in all ways, but uh, indeed the environment impact of such a scale, of this scale of experiment is, is important uh, in principle, is not significant at national level. But what we can see, for instance, is that um, uh, if we speak in terms of kilowatts hours of electricity, monthly electricity consumption, we've seen that the, the households in the treatment group, uh, meaning those that received uh, the behavioral letters, they conserved an important amount of electricity um, compared to those who did not receive. And that is an equivalent of, as you can see on this slide, uh, an important equivalent of uh, CO2 emissions in just one month. Again, uh, against a, a cost of around 10 cents of a dollar per, uh, per, uh, per a behavioral letter, uh, per sending, uh, developing and sending this, uh, uh, these behavioral letters to, to, the, to the households. In principle, our estimation, uh, uh, in the first stage of the experiment, our estimation was that if scaled, we, uh, we then expect that this, uh, um, these behavioral letters would would eliminate an equivalent, uh, a significant equivalent of, of CO2 emissions in, 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 the, in the municipality of Kishno. What we were not planning indeed was the COVID, uh, the COVID lockdown then in, because the experiment was conducted in 2019. Uh, we were indeed planning to do the scaling up, but we did not uh, anticipate that, that it will be a completely different context in which that, uh, that started somewhere in the beginning of March of 2020. And, and we all, uh, because of the restrictions and lockdown in Moldova in March and April of 2020, we all, uh, we've seen a spike in electricity consumption at the level of households because of the stay at home context. And so, uh, in, in, in March, April, we decided again with same partners and plus some additional uh, expertise, we decided to, to go, to, to go to, into the scaling up phase. So the second step of this behavior experiment, but also to go outside Kishinau municipality. So we targeted uh, under the second step, all households that are, uh, that were selected based on, on the reference data that we had on monthly electricity consumption for the next, for the last 60 months uh, before, the, before the scaling up starts. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, we also amended the letters you remember from the previous slides because there was no difference, uh, statistical significant difference in between the two letters. We decided to go on the, with the kilowatt hours uh, um, behavioral letter, we amended the letter slightly. So before the nudge was around, com was about comparing to most inefficient house neighbors. And, and the nudge was to, uh, to, for people to reduce, uh, to improve electricity consumption level of households. In this letter, we've introduced some new elements. So we, so and essentially three new elements were introduced. 
um, one additional elements. One is that, as you can probably see from, from this, uh, on the left hand of, the, of your screens, is that we've introduced this, uh, this additional nudge or encouragement for people to stay at home, again, because it was a lockdown period. The second, we, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are, let's say, uh, signaling the fact uh, to, the, to the household that they, uh, that eventually the electricity consumption is is going up or will be going up. Uh, we've also uh, um, uh, we use the same comparison mechanism uh, to the most efficient households. And at the very end of the letter, indeed, we prompted people to uh, to to pay their bills uh, using a digital online platform for for this kind of payments, uh, encouraging people not to leave the uh, the homes uh, or the the uh, areas in which they or districts in which they they live. We were, uh, I mean, we, if, if the experiment is uh, is again uh, covered households uh, from both then rural and urban settlements throughout the country, and and uh, the results, the preliminary results, let's say of it, as we are continuously monitoring the evolution of the of the consumption in, in those house in those households in the treatment and control groups is uh, uh, surprised us a lot we we had a five times slower speed uh, in growth of electricity consumption during the lockdown in the households targeted in the treatment group those targeted with this behavior that is as compared to those in the control group those who did not re receive any letters uh, and we believe that uh, this is, uh, besides being in principle a success in terms of scaling up, we believe this is a very new, also interesting and further to be explored insight from, from such a scaling up experience in which again, we were targeting households that were, were facing important restrictions uh, of movement uh, within uh, those areas of, of, of uh, residence, uh, both in urban and rural uh, context of, of Moldova. And uh, I think all of these findings, I will be very happy to, to have additional discussions and ask any of, of the questions, both on the methodological aspects, the data aspects, the behavioral aspects, and, and what we've learned out of it. Thank you, uh, and over to you, Inga. Thank you, Dimitro. Um, thank you for presenting the results of this uh, experiment, which is actually uh, composed of two steps, uh, two phases, I would say, and um, which demonstrated that a constant nudging of citizens uh, to reduce their energy consumption uh, could make the difference in household electricity use. Of course, um, COVID impact uh, has um, um, in introduced its um, uh, changes into this uh, uh, scaling up phase. Um, nevertheless, uh, we are still uh, optimistic that this um, uh, experiment will be continued once the COVID uh, ends and uh, we will have uh, uh, you know, the whole chain results uh, on, uh, on electricity use uh, during COVID and, uh, and post-COVID. Uh, one of the important lessons learned uh, that uh, I have noticed, uh, Dumitru, is that engagement with private sector uh, is key to apply the efficiency, energy efficiency element on the ground while uh, the uh, national authorities uh, are responsible for drafting and uh, implementing the, the legislation, uh, the private sector is the one uh, to uh, drive this uh, into the, uh, into the uh, on the ground context. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, participants if they have uh, any questions to Dumitru, um, maybe some uh, details that um, uh, they want to find out, although the presentation was uh, quite detailed one. 
if no, um, I would like to, um, you know, uh, see the, um, uh, I would invite uh, to, to, to check the chat. Actually, we had a question as a result of Elena's presentation. And uh, thank you, Elena and Vahram for uh, responding uh, to that. Um, I can go through through the question, uh, uh, and the question was from Evgen uh, Kaminchik. Uh, how the companies can be motivated to build according to the green standards, and how are they included in the process? And um, uh, the reply was that uh, it, we need to create uh, the market pool and. Um, um, and the, to establish this new trend so that uh, developers are uh, using the energy efficiency certificates um, and um, use it as an additional uh, advertisement tool. Uh, of course, it very much depends on the awareness of the people uh, that want to you know, uh, have their uh, households in the green buildings. And uh, it's a... Uh, um, um, market demand, I would say. And also Elena has uh, responded um, um, to, to, uh, to the chat. I didn't have time to go through the question, through the response. So Elena, could you please intervene here and- uh, uh, Sure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so um, uh, when we talk how, when we are the question, how the way I understood the question is how can we motivate companies to get involved well? In the case of the certification system, which is a voluntary certification system, be sure that the ones who will get certified will become the pioneers and their reputation will increase. They will uh, have better, uh, better buildings to rent. Uh, people will look for their buildings. For example, companies coming from uh, uh, foreign countries uh, they are already in Romania, for example, uh, asking for buildings that are certified for them to rent. Uh, the sales of the of the building will, uh, uh, if not keep at the same value, they will it will be higher and will be perceived higher. And the reason why it's because a certified building is. It means that a, a, a third party, an independent third party, is guaranteeing that uh, you, your, the measures you implemented are translated into a better or higher quality building with a lower environmental impact and with uh, um, um, a, a positive impact on the people who are working, living in that building. Therefore, all these be, uh, just keeping aside any benefits uh, that uh, the builders, the developers, the companies could receive from the public authorities in terms of tax reductions. For, um, I mentioned the example in Romania with uh, companies that could get up to 50% tax reduction for certified buildings in a few cities um, based on performance. Just regardless of that, just the fact that uh, uh, just what I mentioned earlier, plus um lower utility bills uh, should be sufficiently a good uh, encouragement um, 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 argument for companies to get involved and um, yeah if there are any here in this uh, uh, seminar in this workshop with us I encourage them if there there is interest in that to contact the green city lab and uh, and start the process. They will have all the gains for being the pioneers. Thank you. Thank you, Elena, for such a comprehensive response. Um, indeed, it's um, it's um, uh, it's a difficult, but at the same time, uh, challenging uh, and interesting uh, uh, endeavor to to apply the green buildings. Uh, in, in the Republic of Moldova, and uh, not only Moldova, but also in the other uh, countries, uh, even from the European Union. Um, I think that we don't have uh, more questions uh, to speakers uh, from Moldova in, in this session. So, um, Oleg, uh, can we uh, see uh, what would be uh, the next steps do we uh, come back to to the discussions of the first session that uh, 
uh, I, I think yes well first of all thank you very much uh, this was a very interesting session and some very uh, not just challenging but interesting ideas on how what the next steps could be and the idea of certification uh, it comes up quite often there is a project run by the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency a so-called smarter project where a certification of uh, buildings that are not just energy efficient but they tick so many boxes uh, and uh, uh, that allows changes in mortgage rates and other things so it, it it does become interesting for investors so that's something that needs to be kept in mind uh, and the uh, uh, this public information campaign uh, which Dumitru talked about also very interesting because I think the public awareness of what what it what energy efficiency does for you uh, is extremely important. People in normal lives they don't think about it, so this is this is quite important. Uh, I think to be fair, uh, Leonid Danilevsky was quite active in the first part of the session. If he uh, still would like to make some comments, he said he would. Uh, he would do it uh, in less than five minutes. I think we can give him this time and, uh, and then we can discuss the next steps. Leonid, uh, would you like to speak? So, uh... I am glad to greet everyone at this forum because uh, we used to meet more frequently in the past because of the COVID, we interrupted our meeting. So what I wanted to say, uh, you see this in energy efficient building includes two questions. First, it's uh, reducing this thermal leakage uh, owing to this, uh, um, uh, and then secondary use of uh, energy resources. And so when we insulated the building, uh, then the people will use just this building, which is built and it was insulated. They can do nothing else. While we apply engineering uh, equipment there, then there is uh, there are some subjective factors. For example, uh, we introduced uh, special ventilation and the uh, return of energy into home. Some uh, inhabitants will use it, others will not. We already have this experience and uh, uh, there are quite a lot of buildings which demonstrate us that uh, one, while every flat is uh, equipped, only like 70% of uh, 70 to 30 percent of people of flats use the system and uh, while in uh, the rest of the flats they are idle and they are quite expensive so every time we talk about designing and building of energy efficient uh, uh, buildings uh, f uh, equipped with energy efficient equipment uh, it's always a big issue so what can we do like with design we uh, offer this opportunity, like for ventilation, we provide a, a space for ventilation equipment. Uh, or uh, when uh, the walls are uh, enhanced, uh, uh, they are enhanced in a way to allow installation of uh, air uh, duction systems. And what we can do at the time of building, so we can build the, the core was the corpse of, of the carcass of the building with potential for its further development uh, if necessary. And at the time of selling the flat, someone wants to buy a flat which is already fully uh, energy efficient, uh, you know, with uh, ventilation, with the dry systems and so on. While other citizens, they, because they don't have money today, so they don't uh, buy these fully equipped uh, flats, but they have an opportunity to improve 
their flats from the point of view of energy efficiency uh, during its exploitation further on in the future. I would think uh, this uh, could be a more viable, uh, viable approach. Um, about the uh, norms, uh, so every time uh, we introduce these norms, we uh, increase these requirements to thermal insulation. Uh, and uh, I think we have to identify a point of this thermal transfer uh, which cannot be exceeded, so that we, which has no further high level, which means that we will not need to insulate the building in the future. So the more restrictions we introduce, uh, uh, at the time when uh, uh, the building is used and uh, the time comes for its improvement or insulation, so it will need to be uh, insulated. Otherwise. So everybody agrees that uh, buildings should be uh, insulated. Everybody understands that uh, um, uh, hot water consumption should be reduced. Uh, in our case, we already have some uh, buildings where we uh, applied uh, uh, the polling system. Waste uh, water is split. Uh, for um, um, water which is used for bathrooms and the second one which is used from toilets and those which from bathrooms uh, they are used uh, like a secondary resource and uh, this system uh, saves 20 to 25 percent of energy required to heat the system so this is quite uh, well exploited and quite quite friend, but profitable. Thank you, Leonid. That has been very interesting information. Uh, anyone who wants to come? Um, I don't see anything in the chat and I don't see any hands raised. Uh, Inga, I think we can go to uh, our wrap up and uh, next step. Uh, what uh, I would like to do, uh, and it would be part of this uh, next step and closing remarks, uh, I would like to uh, uh, put something on the screen and give the floor to, let me see if I can, yeah, that's the one. Um, and uh, give the floor to Nadezhda. So, she could explain what the next steps in our project are and also say a few words about the links that are on the screen right now. Um, thank you, Oleg. Uh, indeed, the project that we mentioned today had one of the activities on gap analysis. However, uh, and other activities are also previewed in this project. And one of them is the creation of the online database of experts on energy efficiency in buildings. Uh, in fact, this activity started from the phase one of the project and now it's continuing. Uh, we are launching now this, uh, data, uh, this database and actually it's, if you follow the link um, they provided here, it's not only the database itself, it's also including what we call collaborative tool. It provides information on the um, existing energy efficiency uh, in buildings, projects, and events. Again, I'm saying it provides, but as we are just launching this uh, initiative, this activity, uh, th this is just work in progress, let's say. The database has to be filled with experts, and that is why we invite you to register in this database. Um, and uh, the second part on the projects and events um, is also in the initial stage. We would like also to invite you as experts to kindly share the existing initiatives, the existing projects and the upcoming events in the area of energy efficiency in buildings in your countries or the international projects and events. I listened today the presentation of colleagues from Moldova and I 
thing that the projects we're presenting we could also uh, from their permission include in this um, um, knowledge sharing part of uh, of our uh, database and of our collaborative environment so I, one more time i invite you all to consult the, the links that are um, uh, on this uh, displayed now and uh, to register in the database and we will start this initiative this whole project from from that step and we will continue by filling it with more um, uh, the, with more information with more projects and initiatives thank you Uh, thank you, Nadezhda. Uh, I see a hand raised by uh, Sergei. Uh, Sergei, please. Сергей, Сергей Нижегородский технический университет. Вопрос к Леониду Николаевичу. Yes, I'm uh, Sergei from the Nizhny Novgorod Technical University. I have a question to Leonid. Are you there? Yes, just just a sec. Yes, we can hear you, Leonid. Okay, may I speak? So, uh, Sergei is saying, Leonid, uh, I have a question to your comment. Uh, have you calculated the difference between a uh, unitary price of one square meter of the uh, fully energy efficient building and compared to a uh, unitary price per square meter of one which is not equipped. Okay. Okay. The cost of one square meter, let me see. So the difference is about uh, 150 US dollars, but uh, that building uh, was, you know, this was a, a project supported by the UNDP. So they have allocated the resources for all these energy efficient uh, activities, including this uh, uh, ventilation, uh, flat and uh, uh, the three uh, heat pumps, uh, uh, two on the wastewater and uh, one uh, collects energy from the pillars of uh, the building. Then a uh, photovoltaic system about 400, square meters which uh, partly covers the needs um, of the building and the uh, use of uh, thermal um, energy of the wastewater so there are all these uh, systems in the building and uh, we obtained quite interesting results Okay, and in the future, without the support, what do you think? Uh, will one square meter be about 30%? No less. People are contributing 10 to 20%. Uh, so, no, maybe I exaggerated this difference. No, 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 uh, relative, in relative, uh, but I, I don't know. Either. Yeah, I think it's about 20% more. If we talk about fully equipped, if we only talk about this ventilation system, then uh, that's that will take about 10 And Bagram says, yeah, seven to nine percent. So maybe it depends on the uh, innovation and the specific situation in the country. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, Leonid. Thank you, Bagram. Надежда, спасибо за представление uh, uh, нашей новой базы данных. Thank you. Надежда, thank you. Uh, will, we, we are encouraging all participants of this event to uh, register at this database. We will send uh, uh, these links to, uh, to all of you and to, to our existing network of experts so this is not just putting it on the screen for uh, five minutes and then forgetting about it you will receive this information and we encourage you to uh, uh, to join this database uh, i believe nadezhda just shared the links in the uh, in the chat uh, but we will also follow up with uh, email messages to you um, uh, inga um, I'd like to invite you to join me for the closing remarks. 
very briefly uh, what our plans are in the project that we uh, uh, presented uh, this milestone today. Uh, we plan to uh, finalize the gap analysis. So if you have uh, further comments, changes, modifications, please send them to us in the next, uh, I would say 10 days. Uh, and uh, we will try to take them into account to the extent possible. Uh, and then we will finalize the gap analysis. At the same time, our national consultants will continue their work on the national studies and we hope to have them completed most likely by the end of this month. Uh, and then they will also be available. Uh, so again, regional gap analysis for 17 countries and in-depth analysis for three of them, Moldova, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, uh, and then uh, the next step will be training workshops for our three focus countries, for Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, and Moldova. And uh, even at this point, I would like to encourage uh, our colleagues, experts in the countries, government officials, UNDP colleagues, to think of what they would like to have these training workshops on. Uh, again, uh, bearing in mind the current situation, most likely these workshops will be held in the online format or at best in some kind of hybrid format. Uh, but let's see what we can do. As we have heard today many times, it would be good to see people in person but we are still in the situation where this is difficult. Uh, so the three training workshops for the countries and uh, then finalization of our work on the project, the gap analysis, the national studies, uh, and then we will have a final workshop for the project. Uh, I'm looking at Nadezhda, well, at his, uh, sorry, at her, uh, uh, uh window uh, uh nadezhda has i have i missed anything no Alec, i think you covered it very well okay so these are our plans and we would like to continue our cooperation with the uh, well with all governments in unec with the 17 that are uh focus of the original study and but with the three uh countries that are our focus countries and also with UNDP offices uh Inga I'll stop here so you have a chance to give your closing remarks thank you thank you Oleg uh on our side um, uh, we just want to uh, highlight that uh, achieving the SDG uh, 7 on energy affordable energy and clean energy is a collaborative work and as more uh, stakeholders and participants are the better result will be achieved. Uh, I would invite uh, participants who are interested about the Green City Lab activity to follow the um, um, web page of this uh, uh, project in, in Moldova. Um, and uh, we have uh, other planned activities um, dedicated to energy efficiency and renewable energy use in, uh, in Chisinau, uh, very uh, uh, innovative ones. So we are trying to, you know, to, to test finally the ESCOS models in the residential sector, and hopefully we will um, manage to to test it successfully. Uh, for any uh, news about this uh, um, uh, test, um, the participants are invited to to check the, the website and the UNDP uh, also uh, page uh, in the social media. So uh, with this, I would like to just to thank you uh, and thank you and um, um, say um, thank uh, I mean express the sincere thanks to UNIC and to government uh, representatives and uh, other participants for for being with us at this event. Uh, thank you, Inga. Uh, we really appreciate the cooperation with UNDP Moldova. Uh, it was a great experience and. Uh, uh, I would also like to thank all participants of this workshop and, of course, all our speakers and presenters and those who were active in the uh, discussion part of the workshop. 
and uh, also uh, I think gratitude from all of us to the uh, interpreters who helped us uh, with this workshop and uh, English-Russian interpretation. Thank you, Inga. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, bye.